Welcome back. Finally, a new Bourbon City Tackle podcast. Got a lot to cover in a short amount of time. I It's only March 26th. I've fished five tournaments. My wife's going to kill me. <laughs> She's already given me the whatnot. So fortunately, uh, Easter weekend's coming up, so uh, no tournaments on the schedule. Might get some family time back. Yeah, you never know. Something might pop up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her that, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, got my main man back with me, the Snag Master, back again. Heard you've been snagging them a lot, at least that's what Zach says. Yeah, that's that's about all I've done this year so far. <laughs> I've lost, uh, you fished five tournaments, I've lost 75 A-rigs, so uh, we'll get into that here in a little bit, but <laughs> well, it's good to be back, man. Yeah, I only have two left over yeah. there. Well, actually, that's not true. I have two of those, and I, I have some flash mob juniors over there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have to restock. We'll you dive into that. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So we got uh, bourbon this time, Elijah Craig, small batch. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty good bourbon. What do you think? Well, let's give it a try. We'll let All the right. listeners know. So obviously we do have a Marchino cherry uh, in here. I actually really enjoy that, but uh, let's give her a try and we'll, we'll call out a few tastes here. So the first thing I taste is, is a obviously it's a sweeter bourbon. Tastes a lot of honey. Um, obviously you taste the cherry flavor this is really smooth though man there this is not a bourbon that burns going down i mean it's 94 proof tastes really really good this is a nice sipping bourbon for chilling on a on a good evening so i like <laughs> chilling it on a good evening. yeah this one's okay by me yeah i like to put um uh, like we i put a little bit of the cherry juice in there with a couple of cherries yeah a couple of ice cubes not like your traditional neat bourbon but uh, pretty solid. It's a it's a good bourbon to have. It's very affordable. I, I couldn't tell you how much it costs. Like forty fifty bucks a bottle. Yeah, yeah. It's and, funny. I have the same bottle at home. I haven't opened it, but I'm gonna crack it open when I get home. This is this is good, man. I really like it. Yeah. So before we get into fishing, countdown begins to what your sixteenth kid, seventeenth Six, kid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, square root of 16 is it square root? I don't know, man. I, I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, baby number four, baby G number four on the way Friday. Um, this and, Friday, unless I get a phone call while we're recording today, and then I got to get the hell out of here. So <laughs> I'm gonna send you home with a GoPro. Can, you, <laughs> can we put that on the footage? Please no. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you've looked and watched it. I made that mistake. I yeah. Didn't look. <laughs> well, uh, for the listeners out there, if you have a kid, if you haven't had a kid yet, when the baby comes out, that's when you look away. Don't there's, look. There's nothing fun after that. Don't like, look. <laughs> It's you don't want to see that. No, nah, I'm okay with watching your baby being born. There's nothing more beautiful in the world. It's awesome. But after that, just look away. Just look yeah. away. It's not quick, it's non-value added. Quick cut. Yeah, non-value added. At that point, you're telling mama, hey, you're doing a great job. Yeah. I love you. Oh, she, the yeah. baby's so beautiful. That's right. Focus on mama. That's right. Don't don't watch. You don't want that. When you see the when you see the knees, <laughs> abandoned ship. You, That's right. That's all you want to see. Find out what the baby is and then get out. Get okay. out. Stop looking. <laughs> yeah, you back know, out that of aftermath is rough. Yeah, it's uh it changes you. Yeah. So <laughs> boy, girl. No idea. Uh, we're going to let God decide. So, um, you know, we've done this w with all three kids before. Uh, obviously, I have two two girls and a boy. Uh, very blessed in that regard. But we don't know what it is. I just hope it's a happy, healthy baby. Yeah. So, any preference, boy or girl? I don't care personally because I have both now and it's awesome. Um, I do think for Henry, my son, who's my youngest, uh, it'd be really cool for him to have a little buddy to, to run around with. That'll be a, a year apart. Yeah, you him, didn't have so. a brother growing up, right? I didn't, man. You're you're, my, you're the brother I never had. And then obviously <laughs> my brother-in-law is Jared and Matthew. So, yeah. um, And then obviously on Sarah's side, I inherited some brothers. But yeah, I didn't have a brother. I grew up with uh, two sisters and that's why, you know. I'm such a sweetheart, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Something like that. There you go. All right, let's talk fishing. Let's go back uh, to Cumberland. Do we have to? Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's go to Cumberland. Uh, we, we had a tournament on Cumberland Lake, uh, I guess, two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, fun tournament, kind of. Fun practice. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, I think, uh, was it score? Uh, Oh, that's right. Cantu and Schaffner won. Yep. Jonathan uh, too. Yep. Shout I think out they had them. 15, some change. And then uh, I think Sirota and Squirrel had like 14 stuff. So yep. You know, Squirrel second, Sirota fourth, or third, sorry. We're nowhere close to that. Coming in at a solid no, I mean, ninth place, your, eighth place. Your boy showed out as the practice king again, uh, myself and Zachary. We had, gosh, damn near 16 pounds. Did in he practice. call him Zachary or Zach? I call him Zachary, but. Um, I call him both. Yeah, Zachary, get over here. Yeah. He's that net boy. <laughs> <laughs> so did you tell him? No. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, we had a great day in practice, caught almost 16 pounds, had a five pound kicker show up tournament day and just whiffed, man. The fish that we were on did not react, didn't want to bite, um, ended up weighing like six, seven pounds. I think it was seven and like seven and a half in the tournament. So not our best showing. Luckily, the bluegrass allows you to throw out one. So uh, we're hoping that's our throw out this year. <laughs> so we'll see. Our, our, I mean, we had talked about it on the previous podcast. The, the tournament that we dread the most is Cumberland. Yeah. For me, I, for me, it's, it it's a little different. It me every time. It's, it's, I have a hard time. The lake's so big. Yeah, it's tough. And the water color changes. And then just every time I went after a smallmouth, I've been burned. Yeah. Like in years past. Throwing 17 and a half inch smallmouth back all day. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, you know, the spots like had never really showed up for me until this year. Yeah. Uh, and then the large mouth are just hit or miss for us. And yeah. so going into this tournament, our goal was just to finish in the top 10. So we didn't have to burn a throw out. Uh, if we were chasing angler of the year in bluegrass, yeah, we came in at ninth. So I guess we accomplished our goal, but still want to be competing for a win every time. So let's talk about practice. So we both went down, uh, Saturday. Uh, well, I went down early Saturday morning. You went down Friday night, but yep. we, we practiced Saturday what was your strategy in practice? Let's talk about that. So, I, what was the water temp? Do you remember? Oh gosh, fifty four. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think um, it was kind of stained water for Cumberland, um, where I was anyway. We we started off in Wolf Creek, and my strategy honestly was to not go after smallmouth. Mm -hmm. And I know there's probably listeners out there like, dude, you're crazy. But mm -hmm. like, I can't tell you how many times year over year. I've thrown back 17 pounds of smallmouth, weighed in six pounds because none of them make the 18 inch size limit. So yep. my strategy was to go after the largemouth bite. So we started up shallow, throwing spinner baits, throwing uh, swim baits, A rigs, chatter baits. Uh, had some success. The problem is in practice, we caught two of our biggest fish live scoping. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a live scope guy. We've talked about that a lot on this well, podcast. Well, yeah, I still have not cracked that code, but yeah. So like, obviously not feeling super confident, but where we caught those fish, we marked several on the bottom. Obviously, left them. Planned to come back the next morning. So I was really excited about that. We 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 had found fish, and they were associated to the bottom. They were biting, you know, baits that we were throwing at them. So our plan was to start on those fish and then run, you know run points, run uh, shallow, mm -hmm. and, and do you know do that game all day with an A-rig, with a chatterbait, with a spinnerbait. Um, like I said, I think we caught 1569 in practice, had a 5-3 uh, kicker, which was awesome. But again, that 5-3 came on live scope. And yeah. so, well, we started in Wolf as stuff. well. Yeah. Um, actually, dented Darren's bumper back in the boat trailer. Oh, God. <laughs> he said there was a den already there, but I, I think I owe the guy a bumper. Yeah. Uh, he had put the trick steps on there, and uh, there was no parking uh, yeah. at the boat ramp we put in. We, we messed up and put at... We put in at uh, the marina there, halfway back, Wolf. That's right. You all passed up Pumpkin and went yeah, on back. Yep, yeah, yep. But the yeah. the only parking, I don't know how, how far away it is. It's up this giant hill. Yeah. It's at the KOA campground, I said, but it had to be a mile or two. And Yeah, that's a no for me. <laughs> yeah. So so I told Darren, yeah, I'll just walk. I you know, dumped them in. I was like, I'm not walking. <laughs> no, I went up the hill looking for the parking lot, yeah. and I kept going and going and going. Finally, I turned around in a church parking lot, went back down. Well, when I was making my way to park in front of some cabins, like no one's camping yet, yeah, you know, yeah. So I was just gonna park in this parking lot by the cabins that are close to the water. Yeah, couldn't make the turn. Started backing up, jackknife the trailer, put the tricks up right in the bumper. Oh, Too dense. That sucks. Yeah, I told you. It's a tough time. My bad, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. told, told, uh, dude, you dented my bumper. <laughs> <laughs> I put some big dents in it, too. Yeah, yeah. Darren was nice, though. You know how he is. He's like, oh, it's an old truck. Yeah. Still feel guilty about it. It reminds me I need to I need to go ahead and procure that bumper. Shout, but, out, shout out top lip. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the water temp was, you know, in the in the mid-50s. Yeah. Uh, in the afternoon, it was getting up to 57, 58. Um, crazy amount of wind. Yeah. So our strategy was, let's run the back of pockets, back of creeks, and there's not a lot of options for yeah. that. I mean, you've got wolf, you've got caney, pumpkin, Yep. Uh, Lily, uh, Greasy. And that's a, you, you can go, on that side of the lake, you're right, but, like, obviously, like, other side of the lake, there's a ton of options in but the those no the way wake down. zones are no joke. They're awful. Like, dude, I, I timed the no wake zone coming out of Pumpkin. Getting back to the back of Wolf is easily a 30 minute. Just you're sitting in no wake zone yeah. for 30 minutes. 30 minutes on water. Yeah. 22 minutes 
from I think was it yeah twenty minutes or no no how long was it to the uh, did y'all put in at Wolf on tournament day? No, we put in at Pumpkin both days and drove. Yeah, yeah, yeah we put yeah. in at Lily. He's a little bit faster. Yeah, I mean it. It's it's tough. Um, I may or may not. Now nah, I'm not even going to go there. I don't want to be DQ'd or anything. But uh, <laughs> let's just say on practice day there may have been some folks on the houseboats yelling at us. <laughs> it's easy, it's easy. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, you got to respect the no wakes. But That's right. So we we ran wolf uh, just like you actually didn't. We didn't talk about it. We just kind of saw each other back there. We went. Extremely shallow. Uh, it was a sunny day. Yeah. So was hoping that, you know, the shallows, even though it was cold at, at, at night, that once they got some sun on them, we'd start to see some activity. Yeah. And uh, really was trying to build on a pattern that we saw at Nolan. Our, it, and so I'd fish the Nolan USA Bass and I fished the Nolan Renegade. Yeah, you boys caught a sack. Yeah, 23 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, in, in Renegade, we had six, I think, six to 15 and a half or something. Yeah. Uh, got the last check in Renegade, then went back the next week. And so you were kind of carrying over what you thought. Yeah, we didn't have a single fish. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, we had one fish. It was like a two and a half, two and three quarter. It was one o'clock in the afternoon in the Renegade. Yeah what we were trying was not working um yeah. we were trying to fish sort of the mouth of some of the pockets uh cranking running some of the rock walls like trying to fish around timber a little bit mm. did not get bit and we said let's go run up towards you know the wax area start fishing some of the stuff that's in the sun some yep. of the darker you know the more stained water it had a little better temperature to it sure and it worked out but what i learned in that tournament uh, at least in practice, at least this is my current theory, and hopefully Nathan doesn't kill me for sharing, but uh, I noticed that in the very back of some of the creeks in Nolan, um, the water, it, it, it had rained, but they were still trying to keep it at winter pool. Yep. So the fact that they were drawing it out, they were, it was pulling in that creek water that was colder. Yeah. And where that cold water met sort of the stained water where, from the rain there was a significant temperature change. Hmm. So you, I would go like a 100 yards, and the temperature would show, I think it was like 52, 54 degrees, if yeah. I remember right. And it, I saw 48, 44 degrees. Wow. And went 200 yards. Yeah. And what I started noticing is that the bait was in the very, where the water was mixed. It, it Almost like the bait had moved to that first... Right on that line. Well, more on the temperature than the color, I think. Yeah. They were, so there was like, there was bait that wanted to be very, in the very far backs, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that happens in the fall. Yeah. But it had pulled out right to where that warmer water was. And so if I could mm. find that temp change where it would change like a, from a 44 to a 52, from a 48 to a 54, yeah. it felt like the bait was stocked up there and then the bass were on it. And so we figured that out in the Renegade late yeah. in the day. And then try to repeat it at Cumberland. So my mm. my thought process: let's go to Wolf, let's go in, up and see if the water turns clear. Yeah, we did. And then let's come back out. See if there's a temp change. And there was a t there was. Yeah. And there was bait. And we actually marked a lot of fish. Yeah. About around where you caught them, and some other folks that are fishing bluegrass. I won't say their names just because I think they fished there to a tournament. But yeah, they were they were nearby. We were talking to them saw him catch like a three and a half, yeah. a couple other keepers. And we saw you all back there. And it's not a lot. Like as far back no. as I'm talking about, there's not a lot of water. So right. I think it was 11 or 12. We abandoned that and, and went, try to look for other areas. Yeah. And um, it didn't run that pattern, but. Uh, it sounds like we had a pretty similar experience. Yeah. Um, just trying to look for other things. Cause like Zach and I figured out that they were on, like the fish were justified to, channel swing points, like points where the deeper channel came in mm -hmm. and was against the point. You would see a lot of bait. You would see fish on yep. live scope. You'd see fish on the sonar. And we were able to catch some fish doing that. So for a while, we were just running points to make sure that pattern checked out. And once we knew that, we we tried to go do something else, yep. go shallow. Um, and we went super shallow like you, you know, the back of those creeks, like back of Caney, yeah, you have stick ups. Yeah, like a foot or two of water. Yeah, and you've got all those stick ups where, you know, obviously the sun's hitting that. It's it's heating up the water around it. Um, left it, um, which we caught fish back there next to him. And, you know, 
our biggest mess up, and we'll get to the actual tournament day here in a minute, was we didn't just we didn't run what we what we figured out like a hundred percent true on Sunday during the tournament day, and that's that's where we screwed up. So like points, for example, that super shallow bite, we got kind of away from that, mm-hmm. and we tried to do something completely different, and it didn't work out. So yeah, it, and we were the opposite. So you all had uh, uh, if you would have had that bag on Sunday, we win and we have big fish. Yeah, we've been right there with them. I don't remember what. No, it took, it, it took uh, like 1502, and we had 1569. Okay. And so, Big Fish was a three and a half, which shocked me, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the smallmouth, yeah, weren't really that big. Yeah. But, um, so we had one fish. It was like a three and a half back there in Wolf, and didn't catch a whole lot. Bounced around, tried uh, points. We, we tried to run, uh, you know, dirty water, smallmouth. Yeah. I mean, all day. 4.30 in the afternoon, we're in the back of a creek, we ran into you all, Yeah, and there's a boat back there, and it won't. the boat won't start, it's Allison, nice guy. Yep. And so, uh, it was with Darren, Nathan couldn't fish, and told Darren, I said, hey, let's let's see if the guy needs help, maybe we can jump him. So I keep battery cables in my boat, so I was Darren, we were in Darren's boat. You do better than that, buddy. So like, for, for the folks out here, this is what a sweetheart this guy is. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. He didn't just take care of himself, so uh, I don't know if... I guess it was just randomly out of the blue, uh, you know, TG over here uh, put together a, a really nice toolbox <laughs> for myself, for what, Nathan, and Darren. Darren. Yep. You know, it's got all the tools you need. It's got spare prop nuts. It's got the the shear pins for your prop. It's got, you know, a tow rope. It's got everything you need to take the care socket, of your boat. Socket, socket for your prop. Yeah, the, and, and, yeah. And, and, and it's all the things buddy, that I gotta tell you, and, fuses. Like, yeah, for yeah. in front of everybody, I got to tell you thank you because that <laughs> box has saved my ass at least five times yeah. where I would have been shut down on the water, ruined my day if I didn't have that. And so thank you, but go yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So, so we're in the very back of the Creek. We see this guy in Allison. He's broke down, told Darren, Hey, let's help the guy out. Nothing's worse than being out on the, on the water, especially a lake the size of Cumberland. Yeah. You're that far away from the nearest ramp too. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're yeah. in the back of those creeks and it's, yeah. it's a long run. And the wind was yeah. bad that day. Like everything. And yeah. it was, it wouldn't crank and battery was obviously dead. So we pull up beside the guy. We, we had one fish, I think it was like 4.30 or 5 in the afternoon. Yeah. And I'm kind of notorious for getting my money's worth out of practice and practicing late. Yeah, you're the Jacob Wheeler of uh, I don't know about the, that. the weekend warrior tournaments. I, I mean, Beads I, out <laughs> scanning at 11 p.m. <laughs> I have done that before. <laughs> I've done yeah. it to like one or two before. Yeah. But um, so we're we're uh, back there. We, we end up jumping this guy in this Alice, a nice guy. And he asked when his motor starts, he, he said, how are you, uh, you guys doing this? Uh, we only caught one fish. We're trying to figure him out. He says, throw a small swim bait in the run-ins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, throw the small swim bait. He says, actually, this specific swim bait yep. throws a pack in the boat, says good luck, right? That's I, what, that's I, what, by the way, that's what it's all about. Karma, right? Yeah, yeah I guess. exactly. Yeah. 100%. So we start um, pulling out, and I said, let's just hit, let's, let's see if the guy's right. Well, fit, the very first drain we pulled up to caught three fish out of it. Yeah. And that ended up being our tournament strategy for the for Sunday. Yeah, is is to run those drains, and it worked out pretty well. I yeah. mean, it, I mean, it wasn't great. I mean, we finished ninth. Um, we could made have some, been a lot worse, though, man. We made some bad decisions because um, we caught most of what we weighed, probably about ten or eleven. We should have went and did something different, try to call up, but we kind of stuck with it. And we were around a lot of spotted bass. Yeah, and so we were catching a lot of rats before we caught. A, a fish worth weighing sure but um definitely learned a lot um and and sunday in in saturday and sunday um you know as we were going down the walls and stuff like darren darren was fishing the walls and i was scanning out in the middle and trying to use live scope and learned a couple really interesting things on live scope uh saturday um uh, i would crawl that little swim bait yeah along the bottom like six inches a foot over top of the bottom and they would come up and, and get it. Sunday, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. And there was, a, I think there was a fish. It was maybe 40 or 50 foot out. I was crawling across the bottom. I saw it on the bottom. Didn't do anything. I got a little frustrated. I saw another fish. I was, so I started reeling it kind of quick. Yep. Come off the bottom, ate it. Hmm. So I was like, that's strange. Yesterday, they wanted it slow, slow yeah. and close to the bottom. So then... I, I caught a pretty good amount of fish by reeling it about four or five foot under the, you know, just at a pretty solid clip. And they were coming off the bottom 
Hmm. Sometimes like six, eight, ten foot off the bottom, shooting up to eat it. Hmm. And so it's like what it, it was crazy because the difference of like Saturday to Sunday of what the fish was wanting to wanting and wanting to react to. Yeah, which plays into why I struggled. Well, you know. what I learned was on the live scope stuff. You know, the fish are are super temperamental uh, to your cameras. Uh, super laggy, but the, the fish are super. Uh, temperamental to the speed to one day they like it this way yeah. um, one day the other the size of the bait matters color it it, it just kind of really shocked me a little bit but so we ran that um in practice obviously we, we i think we ended up with uh 12 or 14 pounds in practice yeah um and then sunday we i don't even remember what we had it was about the same the guy like nine no we had more than that we had 11 we had eleven seventy or eleven fifty or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, we had five fish. Yeah. Uh, one keeper, Smalley. But um, kick your camera. You just keep bouncing the table and everything. ADD, but, baby, it's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but um, applied it. Um, was happy with the finish. But if I could go back in time, yeah, at eleven, whenever we already had our eleven pounds, change the game. Well, I mean, I were I, I probably would have ran and did some different things and there was a couple interesting things and i don't know if we we talked about them or not i think we did uh darren had practiced i think on friday and saw fish in like six inches of water yeah in the very back of pockets like, actually, cruising not on scan like he just saw physically saw them yeah like sight fishing yeah down in indian actually mm-hmm. uh, around indian mm-hmm. and the the fish were so shallow and so skittish yep he was catching them on a sinker. I don't know what that means. I don't know if the fish were trying to spawn. I don't know if they were sunning. Yeah. But that was definitely something interesting that yeah. uh, was way different. But So walk, walk us through your tournament day. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so as I mentioned, we figured out in practice that the fish were um, justified to channel swing points. Caught a few doing that. Found one that had you know, 10, 15 fish stacked up on the bottom. Actually caught a five there and a three and a half on live scope. So our game plan was to go there after we figured out that pattern in practice, we ran super shallow, you know, back of creeks where the stick ups were throwing chatter baits, spinner baits. And we caught in one spot, we caught three fish, all keepers. And so that was kind of our backup plan. Well, fast forward to Sunday. Uh, I start the day off. Sunday was a bad day for me, by the way. Is that Mm -hmm. when you came incredible Hulk? Yes. Sunday. uh, So my gamer tag for those of you who who game is a raging psycho. And Sunday I lived up to that gamer tag. (laughs) So Sunday I had a bad day for, for a couple reasons. One, um, I started the day off by closing my rod locker on my brand new rod that I got from the East Tennessee fishing expo. Uh So shattered that rod. So, uh, Joe at customs rod, if you, you know, if you happen to see this, I'm gonna be giving you a call, buddy, (laughs) test out that warranty. Uh, so I was already pissed um, immediately, and you know our strategy was to go back to those fish that we marked on live scope that were on that point back in Wolf, and we ran back there, and I knew it was risky because of the live scope situation. And Saturday, where all those fish were bumps on the bottom, Sunday they were foo, 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 all over the the, the screen, mm-hmm. just moving right, just moving quick, and they would not bite anything. And buddy, we messed with those fish for too long. So, you know, we talk about what I'd do differently. I would see that. I'd throw a few things at them that I'd get the hell out of there and move on to something else. So, you know, over time, stuff's building up. I'm throwing an A-rig. Um, I've, I put my A-rig, for whatever dumb reason, I put it on a uh, Revo winch with like a 5-3 gear ratio. And so I'm like getting hung up every five seconds. And it's building up over time to where I'm like, son of a, you know, <laughs> like this is crazy. And eventually like, after like the 50th time of being hung up, I just throw my rod on the deck and you know, Zach's in the back, like, Holy shit. Who's this dude I'm fishing with. So, you know, it wasn't a good day. You threw a hissy fit. I did. I threw a hissy fit. <laughs> um, I threw a temper tantrum, not really known for doing that, um, on the water especially, but, uh, yeah, Sunday it caught up with me and I won't get into the details, but you know, I take anxiety medication. I forgot my medication at home. So I was a raging psycho on Sunday and every little thing was bothering me. You know, I'm super competitive. So, so the word is back in high school days in between playing the tuba, Jeez. Or the rusty trombone or whatever it was. This guy. Yeah. I think you were banned, but not even first chair. 
uh, Hush your mouth. <laughs> the flute or something. What, what was it? You played in the band, right? I played every brass instrument but the French horn. Yeah. Okay. And you, and, and you weren't first chair, though. I was first chair. Ah. It, it changed over depending upon the instrument, but yeah, I, I was first chair. So, so you're in For bands. the listeners out there, I also played basketball. I also played football. Yeah. Well, know, what, I, what I was getting to is, uh, in talking to Zach, who played basketball with you, <laughs> he said you were, you were the uh, – a happy Gilmore <laughs> of, of of high school basketball that you held records in Spencer County most time most most fouls uh, fouls per minute probably well probably most ejections I'd have to say like I don't know if like fouling out's a stat but if it is I exceeded in <laughs> expectations yeah, I think exactly words the exact words were he thought it was football he yeah. would go out there yeah. and just just beat people up. But I remember uh, yeah. we when we were at Amazon together, uh, we we started a new manager, and her son, with, had played for Bullet East. Donna, yeah, 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 and I think you choke slammed him. I did yeah. <laughs> in the game. Yeah, Daniel Alcorn, if you hear this, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so first round of districts back in 2005. Uh, my hard fast rule for high school basketball was I will not be dunked on. It ain't gonna happen. You try, you try to dunk on me, you're coming down hard. And so, you know, he goes baseline. He gets – it's actually, we're on a fast break, and I'm chasing him down. He gets the ball, tries to go baseline and dunk it. I just – you know, in an effort to go for the ball. Yeah, okay. I mean, honestly, I just happened to hit his throat and slam him to the ground. And, you know, at that point – And got I, ejected. Yeah, I guess there was a reputation built from a couple other games. Um <laughs> So, I mean, Happy Gilmore, most time spent – had two yeah, records in hockey. Yeah, so I got most thrown Most time out. spent in the um, penalty box, and I was the only guy to ever take my skate off and try to stab somebody. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, was, I think it was three minutes into the game. I really do. And we ended up losing that game by 60. So, like, who cares at the end of the day? Our team sucked. Uh, no offense to the guys I played with. I loved, I loved that time. But uh, we sucked. We got our butts kicked every game. And so, you know, at the end of the day, like, whatever. So, um, so choke slam – Penalty box, Kyle comes out during the tournament. Yeah, so Rage and Psycho uh, <laughs> happens because you know we we you know we had some success in practice. Can't figure them out Sunday. We're making all the wrong calls. We should have just stuck to our game plan. And honestly, like understanding uh, what other people were doing played a role in some of our decisions. And so, like you know, my my old tournament partner Tyler Sheffield. If you're listening to this, you said it best, buddy. Like I'm not good at catching other people's fish. I've got to do my own thing. I've got to do yeah. what I'm confident in. Yeah. So, like, Saturday we figured out they were on channel swing points. You know what we didn't run Sunday? Channel swing points for whatever dumbass reason, right? So, yeah. like, you know, that's that's something that we need to get back to is just like, hey, let, let's be confident in our ability and yeah. what we know. Fish the conditions, Yeah, too. the other piece is we caught three fish super shallow. Had we done that, we would see more success. But, yeah, you know, I apologize to Zach because I was not fun to be around. <laughs> Normally I'm a great partner to be around. Like, besides the <laughs> – the couple times I've been late, um, <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm I mean, the, every time I'm Captain Positivity. I'm the guy that's like, hey, you know, I'm Lulu writing a note on your on your sandwich bag, like and you know, making two sandwiches. That's right. right. Like you got this, buddy. Like but keep you grinding. Just, it just cracked that day. But was I cracked, and it all came to me, and uh, you know, I end up getting a phone call from TG here, <laughs> uh, giving me some feedback, like, hey, buddy, like you gotta get your shit together. So uh, I'm glad you talked to me about that because. Um, I did think about it. Like fishing's fun. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, Rapala's not calling me for an advertising deal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be fishing the Bassmaster Classic. This is like this is a hobby. It's a good time with buddies. So mm -hmm. it was good to to get back to that. And you know, we'll talk about our time at Barron. But I had a blast at Barron. You know, we we finished fourth, but you know, it was an absolute blast. And I got back to being me. So it, it was good. Yeah, yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah, a couple – so not only did I dent uh, Darren's bumper, but other funny thing happened. I've been, I don't know how many years I've been fishing now, but more than 10. And um, got my first buried treble hook in my finger. Oh. Uh, and so, That's no bueno. Yeah, it was yeah. It was one of those – it was a fish. It was kind of hooked weird. It was on a crankbait. Uh, it was uh, Saturday in practice, and I was trying to – hold it by the pliers and yeah. shake it off the boat yeah. and it like come undone and just fell into my hand and was flopping. That sucks. Um, and Darren was so excited. He's like, Oh, I finally get to <laughs> I do, get this. To do the braid trick. <laughs> I get to do the braid trick trick. And that was the first time I had uh, been a part of the braid trick 
I kind of hoped that my first time would be on, someone else. Yeah, I would be on the ripping, <laughs> right. holding the braid, you know, pulling the braid, and absolutely uh, bled all over Darren's boat. And if you know Darren, it, it you know, <laughs> he, he was probably hey, anxious about that. A hundred percent. Like it's you, meant you, myself, and Darren take care of our shit. And I'd probably say me and Darren a little bit more than you. Yeah, for sure. My boat's got mud on it still <laughs> yeah, from no end. I saw it in the garage. Not on point. <laughs> Not on point. <laughs> Not on point but, right now. But Darren, Darren like Darren waxes keeps it. his shit immaculate. And it's, he's got a white boat and yeah. it's perfect. And I'm just, yeah. I, you know, I'm like holding my finger. I'm like, oh, you know, that, and it's just running blood down. And yeah. he said, oh, let me get the braid out. And uh, one thing I learned, it, and I put it in the boat right away. Have a pair of side cutters in the boat because yep. um, I was trying to get that split ring off oh, the crankbait. That's the worst, and it was it was not happening. So Darren was like, "Oh, I got some side cutters." So we just ended up cutting the split ring. Yep, and uh, you know he wrapped some braid around it and one two and pff, popped yeah. it right out. Yeah, uh, and uh, oddly enough, it now, really be, didn't. Be honest, did you did you scream or cry or anything? I, I it's didn't, a safe space. I didn't lay on the deck like Tim Sorrento. <laughs> 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 which which Jason shared T- with us. Tim, we love you. <laughs> but I saw some pictures this weekend that looked like you were dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were telling Jason about this last weekend. He said, hey, Tim got a hook in his hand, laying on the back deck, covering his face with a handkerchief. Oh, man. <laughs> Tim's not going to like that we're talking about this. <laughs> we love you, Tim. <laughs> but I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, I kept fishing. Uh, and uh, I took a lock of my hand. I, I yeah. cussed a little bit, hey. a lot of it. Uh, yep. But it was over pretty quick. Um, yep. And so, pro tip, have some braid, have a pair of side cutters in the boat, cut that split ring, and it makes life so much easier. You know, I think that's one good thing about this podcast. We're going to talk about our experience at Baron here, too. and um, Not today, but you know, on a different episode. But just learning as you go. Hopefully, we can share some tips with you all that we've learned the hard way. The, yeah. The really hard way in yeah. some cases. So, jumper cables, right? Yeah. In the boat, jumper cables. Yep. Have a small screwdriver in case your trim goes out. Amen. All right? So, you yep. can you can uh, back that bolt out to let the hydraulic fluid off. Absolutely. And I wouldn't even say small. That bolt is really wide, and the, and the gap on that yep. flathead uh, nut is really, really wide. So, you need a really wide, yep. thick screwdriver for that. But just have those things with you. Yep. Uh, braid side cutters, um, and you know we had talked about that with Greg a little first bit. aid kit. Yeah, yeah, first aid kit. Yeah, definitely, because yeah. you know shit happens, and uh, being prepared for it can uh, turn your day right back into fishing versus having to deal with something for a long time. Yeah, especially when you're far away from the house, don't know where the hospital is, all that good stuff. So glad that worked out. I know Darren was excited to try the braid trick. Did he watch the KVD video just to learn best practices? Did, before you know he... what? He, he seemed confident and I didn't want to ask. Uh, my boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I, I just, I said, I got one request. Yeah. When you rip it, rip it good. <laughs> so here's, here's my other question. Did he have a full chaw in the top lip when he was doing this? Was he like, I think, dude, I'm not certain, <laughs> but I think he might've went bottom lip on us. Oh, uh, I know it. D- Darren, I don't, <laughs> hang on, I'm going to look at the camera for this. Darren, <laughs> don't change for anybody. You be you. <laughs> you be okay? your own individual. <laughs> yeah, we love you for your top lip action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but we got it out. We uh, It was a good tournament, a uh, long tournament. It seemed like I was in Texas the week before and the week after. Yeah. Uh, so everything just kind of ran together. Yeah. Uh, but fun fact... Um, so leaving the Cumberland tournament, like I said, we finished ninth. I think it took like just over 15 to win. We had 11, what, like 11 50, I think it was. Yeah. But that was Sunday. Monday afternoon, I'm in, for work, I'm in Dallas, Texas. Actually, Denton, Texas. 23 miles away is Ray Roberts. Yep. So I swing in the academy. I get off work a little bit early, four o'clock, go by like a cheap lose rod, and I'm walking the bank. Reeling a buzz bait and the biggest fish I would have ever had a chance to catch so far in my life just smashes this buzz bait. Yep. So paint this picture for me because you just left work. For those of you who don't know, Tyler's an executive uh, <laughs> at a company. So did you change? No, no. <laughs> So, so you're out there. And I'm, in, I'm in my dress shoes. Super nice clothes. Yeah. I'm in my dress shoes, my button up, yep. like looking all damper. You know, <laughs> I got the I got the Backstreet Boys hair sticking straight oh, up. Yeah. You know, like oh, yeah. I haven't figured out a new hairstyle. Yeah. So you make fun of me. It's That's fine. Okay. Just don't frost your tips. We'll be okay. I, I did frost them for prom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed I, to admit. I did too. Junior prom back <laughs> in the day. It's okay. It was cool back then, David. Mm. 
It was a whole era. <laughs> it was a whole era. Yeah, it was, Get it off was, me. It was like the mullet of the 70s. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. or 80s, I guess. So, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm walking through cactus and <laughs> locust trees and mud. Are there gators in that lake? No, no, okay. there's no gators. Okay. I, but there's rattlesnakes and uh, stuff. Oh, that they, sucks. But the locals tell me that they're not out yet. That's what they said. But oh. it was 70 degrees. <laughs> they're out. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'm like snagging my nice shirts and like and briars now and wait stuff. a minute you Walk asked the locals i want to ask the people i work with it oh there. okay gotcha yeah, gotcha yeah. i could just see you in full dress clothes walking up to like some local fishing in their overalls and you're like hey buddy are there rattlesnakes out here and they're <laughs> no. like look at this fucking Dude. guy oh <laughs> we'll edit that out <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. so yeah so i'm walking through the bank um I actually fish behind the ray roberts marina yeah and realized they weren't supposed to bank fish. So then I had to go way out of my way to get out, away from the no bank fishing signs. And yeah, I was real, reeling a buzz bait through and just it smashed yeah. it. I didn't actually catch anything very big. I caught three or four that yeah. day. Went back the next day, went to a different place, went to Pond Creek, which is um, just north of there. Yep. And the bank wasn't that great. It was it was horrible, but it was a good time, a good experience. Oh, yeah. They have a Tuesday nighter out there. Okay. And you're gonna jump in that next time I'm out there. I'm gonna message the, the guys that run it because I think they only have like 15 20 boats. I'm, see if they need a co angler, yeah. See if they need a co, yeah. Because I think it's like from six to ten or something. Now, do you have a place out there? No, you stay? no I just stay, stay hotels, hotel, yeah. yeah. Okay, but it, it's only 20 minutes from work. So, I would, I would venture to say, of all the people listening to this podcast, and I will give you a, fi- a free $50. Score cre- store credit if you can prove this. I would say I'm the only person to fish Cumberland, and then not even 24 hours uh, later, fish Ray Roberts, Texas, or something comparable. Yeah, I mean, that, I, yeah, 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 yeah. One day to the next. It's a nice challenge. I, 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 yeah. I could see some of our buddies. I don't know. I think I got to be them. not. No, it has to be the next day. Yeah, not the next weekend. Not a few days, like yeah. you know, Sunday at three o'clock Eastern. Yeah, I was on Cumberland. Monday at four o'clock Eastern. Yeah, I was on Ray Roberts. It was not quite, a, you know, 20, what like twenty five. What a great hours. way to flush out Cumberland. Like I've had to flush out Cumberland. Baron did that for me, and and thank God because, you know, my bad, Zach. That was a rough day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm medicated now. We're good to go. But, I'm back but, to being myself. But, but it was a great time. Uh, uh, going back out to Texas here soon, so hopefully I can get with Parker. Parker, if you're listening, appreciate you putting me on. I'm out at Ray Roberts, at least from the bank standpoint. Dude, you and I need to go to OHIV. Yeah. Did you see the bags are catching up there? Uh-huh. 100%. Like, that, Have you been watching Josh Jones? I've been watching Dalton Smith, and even he's saying, hey, 30-pound bag, 30-pound bag, double-digit bass. I want to get out there. I don't care. Like, We'll just hop on a Southwest flight, go for a weekend, have a good time. Make it a guy's trip, whatever, but uh, I got to get through this baby first. It's going to be a while before I <laughs> can do anything. He's going to be locked down. Before I see the light of day, yeah. You, you might miss April, all of April. Hell no. <laughs> what are you talking about? Sarah's a saint. My wife is amazing. Yeah. Let's let's hope it continues for you. That's right. That's right. But uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I mean, I had a good time. It's been too long. It has been too long. Buddy, I got to tell you, the studio looks great, though. There's a shit ton of baits in here. For those of you who are listening, like support your boy. Buy some baits. Um, I love yeah. the bourbon barrel oh, table. Yeah. It looks awesome. Um, grab one of those boxes. I'll talk a little bit about the Pond Hoppers box. Are you going to make me go through the plaque of first place? Where yeah. You, oh, oh. You're an ass. Is that, is that plaque right there? <laughs> you're an ass. Oh, what is, oh, is that the tournament that you and I fished together? Oh, oh what does that say? Oh, for, uh, yeah. Oh, we'll get to that it. at a different episode because yeah, no, I'm grab, still pissed at grab you. Grab the Pond that. Hoppers box there. I want to, yeah. 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 So, I'll set that, I might have set that up a little bit. So that's an interesting idea here. Yeah. So um, the concept here of the Pond Hoppers box, I'm pretty excited about. And, you know, a lot of folks that listen to the podcast, you know, maybe you just like me, you like to fish, even from the bank, anytime you can get out. Yeah. So, uh, put together a box, has some, some lures in it, some Cinco's, it has some trick worms, the hooks that you need for it. All you need right there. Yeah. It has a little, uh, micro, uh, oh, that's perfect for bait, a, pond, yeah. a rooster tail. Yeah. We all know about that. Uh, I think they're like around 20 bucks. They're on the store, but the cool part about it is... When you purchase uh, a Pond Hoppers box, it comes with a QR code. Mm. And so you can just hold your cell phone up to it and scan it. 
and it'll send you to a YouTube video and I'll walk you through how to rig these baits, where to throw them, how to fish them, uh, those type of things. So this is, if you, if you have like a nephew, a niece, a, yeah. a son, daughter, you know, or just somebody who likes to fish, uh, but doesn't want to go to the tackle store or go to Bass Pro and wander around for hours and like, I have no idea what to buy. Yep. These are pretty safe bets to work in just about any pond around here. Yeah. And I got a QR code in there to teach you how to do it. So, uh, if you're listening and you have someone special or you want to do it or yeah. you're not looking to spend a whole bunch of money. Or you got some kids and you're just looking they're, they're, for a starter. They're very food. affordable. Yeah. Uh, you can't go buy full packs of these. Now, the packs are about half packs, but they're plenty enough for a day. And they come in a, in, in a hard plastic box like this, uh, which makes it nice. You can toss it in your truck, in your car. Wrap it up, give it to somebody for their birthday, now, whatever. Are you thinking uh, eventually go into like a, a, a pro like bass box or something like that? Uh, I don't know. Like, I really just trying to support people who aren't maybe don't fish as much as we do, don't yeah. fish tournaments. But ha- but I, I kind of imagine them going to like a, a bass pro or even going to our website and have no idea what to buy. Sure. And so I just try to narrow it down to like here's some foolproof. Yeah. things that you can go and use and you're going to catch fish. I promise you that. Yep. Uh, and, and have a good time. And, and it, like I said, super affordable. So, uh, check us out. Pond hoppers box. Excited yeah, and, about this. And, you know, and on that note, if you're watching this, you know, on the YouTube channel in the comments, if, if there's something on the store that you're not and, and, seeing, you know, drop it in, you know, Tyler, you know, I'm sure you'd be willing to go investigate, yeah, see sure. if you can get that. Um, I, I mean, I have stuff in the store, um, that I don't have a wholesale deal with that I buy yeah. just because like, I'll, I mean, I'll be transparent. Like I'll buy it from another a competitor yeah. and resell it less than what I paid for it just to try to provide inventory. Just to get your business. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just to get a business. So if there's something you're interested in, yeah. you'd like to see me get, let me know. I'll try to go and get it. But uh, well, and as your number one customer, I can say like the you got a good inventory going here. I mean, if, if folks have like unique things that they want to see, great, drop that in. But the shipping's great, the service is great, and you're helping support small business versus yeah. Johnny Morris. And it's right? coming up on spinnerbait season. And if you need spinnerbaits, bam, I got you covered. I mean, there's a whole wall. Uh, spinner baits and swim baits uh, and different things. And, hey, and they're good ones too. Those accents are awesome. Like yeah. that's pretty much all I use now. And those ac- you can't beat them. Yeah. You can't beat them at all. So good stuff. Well, had a great time as yeah. always. Uh, lots more fishing to do. Uh, it's crazy that we're uh, already a few tournaments in in March. Can't wait. And we got green coming up for the next ones. Yeah, we got green coming up. Yeah, uh, we've got another baron coming up. Um, Lots of fun stuff on on the horizon. Stay tuned. Uh, listen in. Lots of good content. We're going to reveal the juice, or at That's least right. the juice as far as I'm concerned. Have, s- juice. have some more guests on this year, so you yeah. know, look forward to that. We're going to have some great fishermen, some folks who run big clubs who have started big things. So, you know, please please stay tuned. Let us know what you'd like to see. Drop it in the comments on the YouTube channel, and then shop at www.bourboncitytackle.com. Yeah, Bourbon City Tackle. Buy our, buy our tackle. And please, if you like the podcast, subscribe. It we helps. Need to, yeah. yeah, it helps us out. Yeah, we hear we've I've gotten lots of good feedback from people saying they love the podcast. Hit the subscribe button, help us out. Let's get those subscriptions up. And you've already paid out how much in tournament rewards? Oh yeah, uh, six hundred bucks. Six hundred bucks already, folks. So like, you know, he's backing up. He's putting his money where his mouth is, so to speak. So if you haven't signed up for BCT Rewards, it's a great program for the local weekend warrior angler. Sign up for that. My man is is handing out cold, hard cash for wins. So yep. um, we'll get some of those folks on hopefully this year that have won and, and been a part of that. But <laughs> but great job, man. I think yeah. I think it's going big. So yep. it's going good. All right. Appreciate you. Stay tuned. See you next time. See you soon.